cylinder. That looks pretty good. Jail with screwdriver in it. Twist. Chevy Silverado, this is a half ton. It's the SLT trim, or LT. It's got a T in the VIN for the engine code. For the impact sensor, if you got a B0104, that is the right hand side or passenger side. A yellow and green wire that you see here. We're gonna unplug it and check it. We're gonna check a little wiring. We're gonna check the connection under the driver's seat. Uh, but you got two sensors. You got one on the right side and you got one on the left. Hey, look, they're twins. So when you're looking at these sensors, there's a number on the front of them. So you want to check the number on the front. You can see that it's a little bit hard to read because it's upside down. But you take a picture of your fo with your phone and you'll know. But basically, if you get that code, you should replace the sensor. That's the consensus. Uh, aftermarket ones are about $85, $90. Dealer ones, it's the same part for 115. So as you can see, there's just one bolt. It's a 10 millimeter. So we're gonna pop that out and replace the sensor. Bolting the sensor is a really simple thing. It's a kind of a long bolt. So when you pull the bolt out of the unit, you only have to go about that far. And if you start to pull up on this at the same time that you're pulling it out, it'll go to a certain point. If you keep going, it just feels like it's never going to end because there, uh, there's a little ring of threads that will cause the bolt to lock up like that. What a pain. So anyway, the GM retaining device on this requires you to go side to side. You can see the retaining devices on each side of that as shown. Once you pull that out, then you can pull the sensor out. What I do is I just use the same wrench that I pulled the bolt with. So you just push that in and it'll snap out like that. So while I have this unplugged, it looks like the connection is really clean to me. I don't see any problem with it at all, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean it with some electrical parts cleaner. I'm gonna turn it so that it's pointing up. Just clean out the back, make sure that there's no mineral or whatever that's causing conductivity between the two wires. They've got a little silicone rubber type boot in the back of it. Clean out this side too. Just like you have on this part that's green, you have the same thing on the back um, that should keep anything out of it. But you look at all the grit and the road salt and all the stuff that gets in there, there's a good possibility that there's something that's conducting. So I got an auto range multimeter. And so you got a watch that says in milliohms. Here's the old sensor that's throwing a code and it puts a code on immediately when you turn the vehicle on. I've had readings anywhere from 19.5 to 19.67 is the highest I've had in terms of resistance. This is the new sensor and we're at 17. So the resistance is lower. That's what I've got. I've got 17. It's a lower resistance than what this is. Just barely. And that makes all the difference. So 19.6 basically and 17.1. 17.5 make sure I have real good contact such a tiny little plug it's hard to get in there so you want to be out be about 17.1 so this old sensor with this one the light stays on all the time and when you clear the light it comes back on immediately this is the new sensor and with this one I've already installed it and tested it and it causes the light to stay off what the heck is even in these sensors you can see that they're put together by a casting that goes around this way, so let's take it apart and find out. I've never looked inside one, and I'm dying to know. And was there rust inside or not? Let's find out. I want to know. Let's find this sucker. Yeah. There's a jail with screwdriver in it. And twist. You don't want to blow through everything, but you want to get in. I'm wondering if that's if they use this for ground or just structure or what. What I'd really like to see is those pins sinking in while I do this, but they're not. So I'm going to wind up destroying and ripping into this thing. But it's already broken. That's why we're taking it apart. So getting in there, did we make the right choice? Did we do the right thing? 
So this is structural only, and then this is the business end of it. And uh, <clears throat> it's full of shit. <laughs> You're full of shit. See, there's the terminals there. Here they are on the other side. And the inside is just full of corrosion. You can tell they've got like a little gel coat going on there. But you can tell why there'd be a lot of resistance, these two wires or what was going on there. So let's see if we can fix it, shall we? Just for fun. Clearly this whole video is not intended for any learning or empowerment or anything like that. This is all educational, entertain well not even educational. There's liability there. So screw, screw education. This is just a demonstration for illustration and entertainment. Should have used a cleaner brush. This one's going to make everything hard to see. Yeah, we're just being entertained here. That's all we're doing. So that's got a, like a soft goo on it. It's not even a hard goo. Look at that. And I don't think those wires were supposed to stick up past that. And I think we're going to have infinite resistance because that wire got mangled. Suck. All right. Well, we're learning new things. I thought that would be a hard stuff, but it's got to be a soft goo. For purposes of impact and movement, apparently. All right, let's just get all this nasty sh boogerage out. So it looks like all the corrosion that happened happened on those two wires, and those two wires go to the computer. So I think we're going in the right direction. I think we're on point here. So what does this wire attach to? It attaches to that plate here and this one attaches to the plate there. So if we attach them again and then do our resistance test, we probably will be able to get our reading at 17 where it's supposed to be, as long as we're connected good. Because I think that's where in the failure lies. Donde hay la culpa? Donde hace? I don't know. Yeah, this thing's really fragile and full of boogers. Where's my... I'm trying to think, I have so many different tools that have tweezers. I just want tweezers right now. Is that cool? Well, I dare say I properly medicated the crap out of this. I didn't realize it was going to be such soft boogery goo. Like I say, I've never taken one of these apart, but why not? I think the corrosion is pretty obvious. Probably should replace the other sensor too. It just hasn't failed as good as this one has yet. Should have taken a picture of it with my phone and sent it to the owner and said, see, we did good. I mean, there's like Statue of Liberty corrosion on the copper parts everywhere. And there's a bunch of that white corrosion too. That wire's still connected good. This one just really got ripped out. I don't know, how do you clean a wire that's that delicate without ripping it up? And why would you want to? This is an important sensor. Anyway, that explains why the resistance was higher. We were right, it was corroded inside. What is this nasty booger stuff? It is supposed to prevent corrosion, but apparently it wasn't put on thick enough or deep enough. Those wires were exposed and moisture got in there and it corroded and failed. Whatever. So here's the two contacts. They're supposed to be here and here. This one's still connected, but the other one's not. So the one that we had failure on was this side. So if you're looking at the plug this way, it's on that side. That wire pulled out. It's funny as I exposed it to the same. Let's see how hard it is to pull that wire out. Not very hard. You know, it like blew out the other. Fascinating. It's springy. Well, it's good that the computer can recognize when it's boogered out. Seems like there should be a chemical or fire way to get rid of all the junk in there. There you are, all clean, good as new. 
So this circuit's going to have a potentiometer in there. I think it's this green bit. This is the processor. And then you've got a couple of resistors here. And then a switch or something. Maybe this is the potentiometer in the side. I don't know. One of these three is. I don't know. These are resistors for the circuit. And that's the processor. And one of these three does something. I don't know. It's so full of boogers. I should have I should have taken better pictures of it before. I can screen cap it. But isn't that fun? Bonus footage at the end. Is that Spanky? <laughs> the coin machine we went to the post office I'm just wasting time pretty much I'm kind of enjoying it it's not bad it's been kind of a crazy week it's kind of time to just take it slow for a minute so we're gonna head back so we're in a 2010 Cadillac CTS with the V8 the 6.2 liter supercharged yeah it's got bad upper control arm bushing so we're just driving it and just making some observations and stuff gathering symptoms and all that sort of thing for the video so the overall symptom that you get is the vehicle all of a sudden it feels top heavy rather than being really secure and sure-footed rather than having your stabilizer bar doing its job it just seems like it you know you just rock a lot there's a lot of play and a lot of give because those bushings, the centers are moving on them. So it doesn't really brace you up or support you. It's just a side to side rocking. At low speeds, it seems like it doesn't handle as well. And at high speeds, it just, it just rocks profusely. It's like you're riding in an RV or something. 